Okay, so I essentially self-studied IB Biology HL myself. Not because my teacher was bad, but because I missed all my HL classes because I was lazy. And the SL ones I did attend for the two years, for the one and a half year that they were teaching SL in my school, uh, I was really just a class clown and I barely paid attention. So I didn't know nearly as much as I needed to know. Having said that, I still ended up with a seven. And I'm gonna show you how you can do exactly the same by self-studying the subject. There are a ton of people telling you to use this book, that book, and there are all these different resources. And honestly, there are 10 different ways to study the same thing. But I can assure you, the specific way that I'm telling you works wonders. So if you have a short time to study, check out my IB Biology Crash Course video. Hopefully I'll put like a, I think it's a card, that's what they call it. I'll put a card to link to that video. And that's gonna show you how to compress those two years of syllabus in two weeks. But if you have a little bit more time, this is the ideal way you should self-study. Okay, so I always claim that IB Biology doesn't require a lot of memorizing. You mainly need to know the main concept or the main idea of a particular topic. And a lot of people can't figure out the main idea, so they result to memorizing, which is a lot of wasted effort because you really only need to memorize the fine details at the end, but the main idea or concept, once you get it, it's stuck in your head. And that's how we're gonna organize our studying. We're gonna focus on understanding the main idea and get the fine details later. So the first thing you need is a textbook. For IB Biology, I recommend the textbook by Pearson. Do not use the Andrew Allot Blue textbook because that's gonna mess you up. It's an overly complicated book and it's gonna leave you confused. To get an amazing explanation of the course, use the textbook by Pearson. Now, the reason this textbook is so amazing is because it teaches you the material in, in a way almost like a story. Like they teach, you, they teach it to you like to a person who has no prior knowledge. Unlike the Andrew Law textbook, it's very easy to understand and the concept, the main idea sticks in your head right on. And what I mean by concept and main idea, you know, like let's say you're learning a, a topic in bio, let's say transcription, okay? The first time you learn it for a class test, it's super hard, right? Let's say you have, but then, okay, you've learned it for the class test, but let's say in the end you at the end of the year you have a final exam and you have to learn that topic again because you forgot most of it now the second time you learn it it doesn't take you as much time because even though you don't remember the specifics you know all those aha moments and all those confusing pitfalls were taken care of in the first time you learned the topic for the class test so you still remember the main idea but without the specifics and that's kind of how the Pearson book works you learn the main idea of a topic, the key takeaways, so very easily later on when you learn the specific details, it becomes so much easier. So that's the way we're gonna learn our course, concept first and then the specifics. And trust me, when you tackle both of these things together, like in the Andrew Lott book, it messes you up. Okay, so every time you study a topic, go to the Pearson book first, but don't get too caught up in the specific details like the name of the enzymes uh, and trying to cross out every single syllabus statement. The Pearson book does not do that well. It covers a majority of them, but not everything. Just read it to get the concept in your head because it explains it so well. It lays an amazing foundation so that later, when you build upon it with more specific information, you still remember everything clearly because you know how everything relates together and how everything you know interrelates. So what happens when, even though you've read it from the Pearson textbook, you still can't understand a topic? For me, personally, I learn better from a person than a textbook. The problem is, not all of us have fun, lively teachers. So where do we get a fun, lively bio teacher? Well, we head over to YouTube and search Alex Lee. So this guy has made videos for essentially the entire IV biology course, and he does an amazing job at it. I wouldn't have been able to understand cell respiration and Krebs cycle if it wasn't for him. He explains it so well. Well, the reason I don't recommend him before the Pearson textbook is because to understand his videos, you already need some, like a very basic level of prior knowledge. Not too much, uh, but if you don't know anything, it's very easy to get lost in his explanations uh, because he uses so many analogies and so many examples. You really have to know what's going on. Like in his, when he's explaining the Krebs cycle, he's using the analogy of tickets and a circus. Like you have to understand the main idea biologically first then you can kind of understand what he's talking about. Okay, so we've established for the textbook, we need to use that as a primary learning, we use the Pearson textbook, and to unlock all those aha moments, and we use Alex Lee's YouTube channel for added explanation. Now, both of these resources are useful, 
but they're not technical enough. To get a 7 in IB Biology, there are specific things you need to remember, like enzyme names, certain parts of a topic, more than unders are highlighted, and you know, in, in, big, in big processes, you need to remember them in a certain order of events. So after you've got all your concepts done and you know 80% of the course from the last two resources, it's time to get specific. And how do you do that? Well, well, you need to get the Andrew a lot revision guide. Okay. So the reason I'm recommending this revision guide is because literally any time you have an exam on a topic, don't go to the textbook. Okay. Use this revision guide. It's literally everything you need to know for the exam, the perfect level of depth, and it's all exam oriented. I swear it's almost like the marking scheme in the exam has been crafted from this revision guide. You'll notice the same diagrams appear in the IB bio exam are usually the same ones in this revision guide. One chapter uh, is usually seven pages in this guide and everything you need to know, including the level of detail and the main theory behind it is here. You will waste a lot of effort if every time you keep on rereading from the textbook, rereading from the textbook. The textbook contains supplementary information that you don't need for the test, but it's helpful when you're trying to understand those topics, you know, avoiding those pitfalls and those aha moments. When you're studying from an actual, for an actual exam, go straight to the revision guide. Now, to understand the revision guide, you need to know the concept first, right? You need to know the main topic first, which we learned from the Pearson textbook. And after that, it's just a matter, it's just a matter of learning from the guide. Like I said before, about learning the topic first and then the second time and the third time you learn, it becomes much more easier. You use the Pearson book first to understand the topic, but then you revise every time forward with the revision guide. And since you already know all the main concepts, figuring out where those smaller details you get from the guide fits in becomes super easy. Okay, so let's see where we stand. The Pearson book first, Alex Lee for additional help, revision guide for exam preparation. Now, the most important thing, okay, past papers. Okay, this is important for two things. Database questions in section A, paper two, you literally can't do these well unless you practice them because it's just like an IB specific type of question, okay? It doesn't require too much prior knowledge, but you need to practice them to get good at them and they add a lot of marks for your paper two. And secondly, section B. The long answer questions in IB biology, for some reason, have so much similarity between the past paper questions of a topic that when you keep practicing them, you find out what the IB wants you to write. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say for the past five years, eight different questions on transcription has come out. There are only so many ways to ask a question about the same topic, right? So obviously the marking scheme of these questions are going to overlap. And these areas of overlap or the same answers in these different questions that reveal to you, they show you the patterns of these questions on that specific topic. and eventually, you know, you just know if supposing a question on transcription came, you know what to write because all those similar statements in these different questions from the marking scheme get ingrained to your head. And all of this, the best part, it happens automatically. So I'm telling you, once you finish studying a topic, once you've done your revision guide, once you've done your textbook, everything, go to the, go get topical past paper questions or just do past paper questions by topic and do them one after the other. The similarities in the marking scheme will show up so well and you'll be so amazed at how easy the subject really is. Okay, so I basically showed you how to prepare for your written exam, but there's one component left, our IA. How do you self-write an IA without much input from your teacher? Well, that answer is this amazing website by Ms. Von Bargen. Okay, so before we get into this website, I just wanna let you know, my topic for my IA was so easy, okay? It's been done so much that I was so scared that I chose it because everybody says you need a hard topic. I'm not gonna say what it was because I don't want people copying it, but I'll tell you this. I was in the lab report doing my experiment and all of a sudden, a group of first of, of ninth graders walk in. Literally, they started the doing the exact same experiment as me in groups. I realized at that moment that I was doing an introductory experiment of a ninth grader of IGCSE biology. Can you imagine how freaked out I was? I was ready to change my topic because come on, right? People say you need a, you need a good topic, but I'm doing something so simple. Uh, but thankfully, my teacher calmed me down and he said something. He said that it isn't about the experiment, it's about the report. 
if you can write an amazing report, your grades will follow. In the same way, you wouldn't expect just because you have an amazing experiment with a bad report, it won't do well, right? The report is key. Now, there's a website, let me come back to this. There's a website called Biology for Life that has a ton of information in, of IB Bio in general. But the I section of the site has some incredibly useful information. It takes you through the criteria and shows you how to get through your first draft of your IA. It really makes you answer some questions that helps you make sure that your IA is on the right track. But let's face it, right? You don't really care about um, you know, drafting your IA. You, what you honestly care about, right? The biggest question is you, need, you don't even know what to do your IA on, right? You need a topic. In fact, we all need topics. I could give you all the tips to do your IA well in the world, but unless you have a basic idea of a topic, it doesn't matter. And that's just going to make stress compound and compound. So if you don't have a clue of what your experiment should be, you know, in fact, most of you are probably Googling for IB bio IA topics. Well, I was in that same position. In Biology for Life's website, there's a section of approved IA topics that contains over 1,500 different IB biology IA topics that this, that this lady, Miss Von Bargen, has approved for her own students. And you can see that she's a smart lady. She's not just approving anything. Now, I'm not saying to, I'm not saying to copy it, wink, wink. But it gives you a very thorough inspiration for your IA experiment. So that should give you an amazingly comprehensive start and a very good idea of what experiment you should do, right? Because there are 1,500, 1500 of them to choose from. At least that's what she claims, 1,500, something like that. It's a lot, right? I, have, I didn't count each one of them by, like I didn't count, but it's a lot. Now, one last tip. Pick a topic that you can perform higher order statistical tests with, like the T-test, ANOVA test, chi-square test, you know, these tests. More specifically though, the ANOVA test, because a lot of IB teachers value reports with them. And, the, and my teacher, I remember she said that the IB ANOVA test, sorry, what am I saying, the IB? The ANOVA test, uh, when it's in a report, can really, really boost a person's mark. So if you can, pick a simple topic, but one that you can analyze statistically very well. Okay, remember, the report is where you shine. If you gather enough data and highlight that you understand how your experiment connects with your data in your report and, you know, tick off all these IA rubrics, you're going to do really well. If I can do it with my stupid experiment, you know, essentially it's a baby's experiment. When my friends were doing these overly complicated, ex messed up experiments and they got a six and I got a seven at HL, that should tell you that you don't need a super complicated experiment and that you shouldn't worry too much. Okay, to sum it up, okay, where is that paper? Here. Okay, to sum it up, Pearson for the concepts and the main ideas, Alex Lee to substitute your teacher, a lots revision guide for specific information, biology for life for your IA. If there are more resources, I'll post them in the comments as I find them, and if you have any, Please post them too. I'm sure we'll all benefit from them. Okay, hopefully that helped. Reach out to me if you need any questions answered. Have fun.